OK, so we are the Northwood Morris Man. I'm the official fool. Uh, we were founded in 1975 uh, by members of the local scout movement who put it together for a, a, a gang show. Uh, they thought it would be a bit of a gas to do a bit of Morris dancing. They learnt two dances and were after an encore. Uh, and they had nothing to do but the two dances they'd already done. So having done that, they thought, a bit of fun, we'll keep going. So here we are, 37 <laughs> years later, uh, no original members, but somebody who can date back about 36 years is the oldest surviving member. I'm now claiming 28 years, um, 16 of those as the official full. Uh, we've danced the length and breadth of the country and abroad, and uh, occasionally we get invited back places, which still amazes us after all this time. Uh, we are Croydon's foremost and indeed Croydon's only traditional Morris team and we're very proud of that fact. Right, I'm Stephen Collingwood, I'm, I'm the squire of the Northwood Morris Men, and here we are on our day of dance. This is about the fifth time we've been out there doing things. We're starting out at Oxted, it's outside the Oxted here, on a pretty good sunny day, which for this time of year is not bad going, because we're four feet great. Um, I've got half the guys dancing here, there's four teams here, another four teams about 100 yards away outside Morris Men, and hopefully earning lots of money from shoppers and other key people out there. And uh, yeah, I hope we're going to have a really good day. It's the start of it. I'll see you later.
I'm Peter Halfpenny, the Squire of the Morris Ring. Delighted to be away for the weekend with Northwood, our hosts, dancing in North Kent. It's so lovely to come out and see new sides, sides you haven't seen before, and old friends as well. I'm dancing with them out on the weekend, a glorious weekend.
Hi, I'm Brian. I'm the musician for the Northwood Morris Men and before I played with them I played for the Rutland Morris Men in the English Midlands. And so I guess I've been playing for about 25 years and I have some well, idiosyncratic views perhaps on, on the music and how it works. A lot of the Morris tunes that we use were probably originally song tunes. They were popular tunes of the day, a lot of them are. 18th century tunes, or some are older. Some of them we can date back at least to the 16th century and possibly even earlier than that. Um, they're monophonic tunes, that is, they're, they're just tunes. They, they're, that's the melody line, if you like, and I believe that they work best like that. They don't need an accompaniment, they don't need any chords underneath them. And I also think that they're quite intimate tunes too. One, one musician, six dancers, that's all you need. And that means that the, the dancers can respond to the music, and the music can respond to the dancers too, because uh, the Morris dance is made up of lots of different movements, different shapes of the dance, different things that you do principally with your legs and your feet. And I think that the, the tunes themselves, or the way that you play the tune, should reflect that. So if you're dancing one particular figure, um, then you play the tune in a way that reflects that figure and then, then the next figure, well that's different so you play the tune in a slightly different way that again suggests the way that the, the music is going um, so I think you've got a directness in, in Morris dancing, in the music for the Morris it's a, it's a two way process you have to respond to the dancers but the dancers have got to, to respond to you so yes, you give them the tempo, you give them the beat, you give them the pulse uh, you, you keep everything held down, you keep everything in check. But on the other hand, it's not just that one-way process. I think you have to respond to, uh, to the way that they're dancing and make sure that the music that you're doing is appropriate to the, uh, the shape of the dance, the character of the dance, and the nature of the dance. Now that might all sound a little bit heavy, but it's fun, really. Ten thousand times a Jew. I am going across the ocean, why for to seek for something new? Come change your ring with me, dear girl, come change your ring with me. That it might be a token of two love that I am going to see.
I'm Roger Hill, I'm called the Bagman Day of Dance, which is a totally honorific title. Um, that's another year over, very pleased about it. Fortunately we had very good weather, although the week before was lousy. Um, my basic job is to first of all organise who is going to come, so that I do that by contacting people mostly on email. Although this year was much easier than before because everybody came last year, said they wanted to come this year. So I didn't have much problem this year. The biggest single problem is actually getting the right number of bums on the right number of seats. And this year, as last year, the last minute changes of can we get an extra one in, uh, no, there's no seat, oh, two of us are not coming. So then I go back and say, right, there's an extra seat, oh, but the one who wanted to come can't come, and so on and so on. Anyway, we ended up uh, with the right number of bums on the right number of seats and the sun shining. Uh, what else is involved after that? is the scout hut is uh, already um, reserved well in advance, a year in advance. Um, we have to arrange the tour, where we're going, and most of this is done by John Wim, uh, who went round with Ben and goes and sees all the people, tells them we're coming, make sure that they know we're coming. We've got 83 people coming, or 87 I think it was this time. Uh, so they've got beer on tap and they don't run out halfway through. Um, and then arranging what we're going to have for lunch, uh, and making sure that what we organise for the evening meal uh, uh, is not the same as we're having for lunch. In fact, it's the other way around. Because for the evening meal, the feast as we call it, uh, three years in a row we've had Planet Spice who have done Indian takeaway. I think that's about it. Then, then they're simply getting all the, the kit out here, doing the shopping for breakfast. For Friday evening, first of all, lots of, lots of cheese and pâté and French bread and butter and all the rest of it. Um, oh, I forgot the beer. I should never forget the beer. I had to go and pick up the beer, um, set that up, um, bang the, the whatever you call it in, the thing that lets the beer out. It's got a proper name, but I can't remember what it is. Um, and then uh, Friday night people come and they have smackerels of this, that and the other. 
Uh, we went to bed early this year, it was about half past one. Uh, and then we get up at six o'clock to get breakfast. Then we have to shovel people around to get on the coaches. Uh, the coach then has to wait while the last one turns up. So then off we go. And then um, coming back, uh, we have the feast. Uh, we have um, songs and music. And actually this time we went to bed quite late, probably about 12. <laughs> and I think that's about it. Get up in the morning, get breakfast, and now uh, we all packed up and we're ready to go home. <laughs> Bay Gables and engine first went up and down. Now with more technology, the engine goes around. We know our steam and diesel. What's the main yet for? A stoker ain't a stoker, we a shovel anymore. Don't pull on the ropes, don't climb up the mast. If you see a sailor ship, it might be a last. Yes, yes, you see if he's ready for another run ashore. A sailor ain't a sailor, ain't a sailor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Hello. See you later. See you later.